good morning friends i am thankful to the board of studies to take such an initiative during the lockdown period the students of english must be uh, reading the text that i prescribe for them during this lockdown it's an opportunity for the students to read more and more books and avail lots of time to prepare for the exam so i hope the students might be doing well using this lockdown period to more and more concentrate on their uh, learning and practicing the question papers and writing practices uh, i am thankful at doubt say to sri vijay jadhav sir honorable president padma sri anna saheb jadhav bhartiya समाज उन्नति मंडल एट द सेम टाइम आई एम थैंकफुल टू श्री बालकृष्ण काले सर ऑनरेबल एग्जीक्यूटिव प्रेसिडेंट पद्मश्री अन्ना साहेब जाधव भारतीय समाज उन्नति मंडल एट द सेम टाइम आई एम थैंकफुल टू डॉक्टर अशोक वाघ सर द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ बी एन एम कॉलेज टू टेक सच इनिशिएटिव एट द सेम टाइम डॉक्टर सुधीर जा निकम सो एच ओ डी एंड चेयरपर्सन बोर्ड ऑफ स्टडीज इन इंग्लिश to take such a beautifully initiative during the lockdown period and to keep the students uh, in touch with our syllabus it's a revision lecture series organized by board of studies in english for dyba students and i am professor shailesh pandane from jawa college uh, i hope you uh, might uh, be benefited from Uh, whatever presentation i am going to make in front of you uh, i like the students to read more and more and this is an opportunity for all the students to prepare for the exam to write and to utilize the time by god's grace or by nature's grace we have seen this epid, uh, pandemic like conditions and these conditions are definitely uh brought all human activities to stand still so hopes i hope that this uh lockdown period will end soon and all our college days and college activities will flourish once again uh this is uh centered on 20th century british literature all the students must have studied and uh, their teachers might have or uh, taught them to the maximum extent but whatever you might have studied this is just a recall of what you might have studied in the classroom transaction so the first uh, topic term that you might have learned is feminism in modern literature this is just a reminding just a revision of what you have actually studied you have read features of feminist literature patriarchal civilization uh, women are always been marginalized sections of society marginalized sections of society not in hindu but all other say um, religious traditions society and it is as we have seen as a patriarchal society the civilization has dominated by the male by the male centered ideologies dominated by the all human activities that are centered and dominated by male activities and the female were brought under the subjugation of male authority the entire civilization entire social transaction all cultural transactions are centered on the patriarchal society and the women were subjugated to the next level so it's the second date see is kind of all the sex okay because it is brought to the physiological say it's her lack of male sex organ the there is another feature of her feminist modern literature is the prevailing concept of gender so as we have seen this uh, concept of gender 
the gender stands for what is uh, masculine male and what is feminine and female or what are the identities that separates masculine and feminine identity so the critical theorist the critics or the theorist has proposed these theories women uh, were called by simon de beauvoir as cultural constructs these ideologies pervades in writings the ideologies it's a cultural construct the ideology pervades in the writings this is another trend that we have seen in the modern literature the female uh, females were not given enough space in the critical writing in the literary works in the literary work of art in every kind of art the the heroes suppose if we take the example of the tom jones joseph andrews okay the heroes were male and the female were ignored in the literary text so this uh, this critical theories were depending on these uh, ideologies that were there then feminist feminism deals with to do justice to female points of view concerns and values at the same time the women were trying to uplift the ideologies of the sections of society the women were decried of writings of men depiction of women as docile marginal and subservient and under this uh, feminist writings we have seen the uh, the critic elaine show walter proposed three phases of women's literature she has categorized these phases in feminine phase in 1840 to 1880 then we have feminist phase in 1880 to 1920 female phase in 19, uh, 1920 up for stool till death mary wollstonecraft criticized burke's views on uh, spreading false image of women in vindication of rights of women she argued rejecting old traditions and constructing model of living for all okay. john stuart mill who who advocated the theories for liberation of women okay. virginia wolf is another um, feminist critic so virginia wolf pleaded for the autonomy for women she argued that women should have money and space to write fiction her famous book a room of one's own insists emancipation of women simon de beauvoir the french novelist in her second sex provided the theoretical framework and influenced american and european feminist writers women as a cultural constructs dominated by male and Uh, female ideologies elen show walter is one of the influential american writer her major concern was the gynocriticism then this critic uh, feminist uh, type of writing has uh, spread as the spread of education has reached to the marginalized sections of society the liberal policies adopted by some of the governments to reach out to the the sections of society and tony morrison alice walker represents the black feminism in english literature okay. at the same time after 1960s onwards <clears throat> as um, many na uh, subjugated nations were on becoming independent the fe uh, post colonial feminism is concerned with ignoring the colonial male and marginalization of western her marginalized by western terrorist later it was adopted by the other marxist and structuralist writers then another term that is prescribed for the students is the science fiction 
science as we know <clears throat> science is a branch of study science involves mm, the scientific texts experiments new discoveries and it become a part of the 18th and 19th century lots of innovations have taken place during this uh, last two centuries scientific discoveries are imagining the science of the society the science fiction brought up the plot represented the researchers the scientists embedded in the plot of the science fiction the characters are either scientists experimenters at the same time some of the scientists are the characters that they have adopted to write on it's a kind of an advanced science okay advanced scientific experiments advanced scientific uh, discoveries that they want to propagate <clears throat> use for the welfare of the human being and at the same time those who are not using for the welfare of human being are called as villains and the, uh, during this uh, say 19th no uh, 19th say decade of the late 19th century the advent of science fiction has brought has uh, assumed the space and brought lots of uh, novels during this period technology space explorations time travel extraterrestrial lives utopia dystopia these are the out of human reach are brought near by the scientific imagined plot and fiction for example the star war matrix and these science fiction was propagated by the well known science uh, science fiction writers like h g wells robert louis stevenson or the saxley the next term that you have learned is post world war second novel world war has brought the disasters the catastrophic chaos european nations were displaced nations the cities villages the battlefield ruin the lives of the common man so the displacement has become one of the say feature of the post world war the long lasting impact of the war is felt in uh, the later few decades until now we have such a um, disasters disillusionment and changes in the societies the life this change in all human transaction all human relations have brought a tremendous paradigm shift after the world war second we the world has seen the atrocities of adolf hitler the uh, brutal suffering killings of the jews and these uh, caused tremendous disillusionment and frustration the human being is uh, called as as uh, in as an insect by night then post world war second has some moral issues some ethical issues it's a dilemma the characters are facing in the later decades of the nine in the 20th century so the relationships were fragmented relationship elizabeth bowen costler george orwell 
has brought these features, this fragmented relationship in the family or in the society brought to the fourth. Okay. Then we have another, uh, you might have studied the political satire. As we know, World War II is an outcome of the politics, the decision makers the oligarchical society, the governments which are ruled by few people. It's a, it's a moral allegorical, superseding variety of uh, forms. The political satire after the World War II, say, have brought these changes, Soviet communism as a source for Kostler and um, George Orwell. George Orwell's in 1984, Animal Farm <clears throat> has carried out these features in the modern uh, say fiction, post-colonial modern British fiction. The post-colonial modern British fiction is a representation of historical, political, economic, racial, literary, and linguistic perspectives against Western system of knowledge. Postcolonial modern literature brings out the disparate forms of representation, reading methods, values that move into the past and present. Franz Fanon is known as the earliest post-colonial inquiry. He brought the miserable condition of black under the French rulers. And that is what he said to be the first colonial writer in the modern British fiction. Edward Said's Orientalism, he explained the complicity between colonialism and imperialism. Mm -hmm. Consequent view that colonized people need to be ruled over. Homi Baba, who discusses issues of nationalism and nationality. Homi Baba, in his theory, has uh, categorized this uh, post colonial set traits in unhomeliness. Unhomeliness plus us, the colonized in duality position. They are neither belonging to their native land and they are not foreigners like foreigners. This duality of position has blessed the colonial people in the dual position. They are neither on oh, this side or neither on that side. So they are the a uh, result of the mimicry. The colonized follows the colonizers. They tries to be just like wearing suit boot. They look. They wish to look like uh, the foreigners, and acquired the characteristics, the type of living, the habits like colonizers. But they cannot altogether avoid their own nativism, their own inherent temperament, the geographical, the natural conditions and the lives they have lived. So it brings them, it's the colonized are just a, the hybrid product, neither of that culture or neither of this culture. The two culture creates the new culture. Hybridity is a product Hybridity creates a new kind of a culture. This hybridity influences the dynamic cultures. Gayatri Chakravati Spivak is another theorist who voices the marginalized sections of the society, voices of minority groups. She criticizes the Western theory, Western theorist 
for uh, dominating the academic type of writing through the Western perspectives and not from the Eastern perspectives. She was a very well known for her subaltern studies. Then we have Gauri Vishwanathan, British dominance to perpetuate their rule. She advocated, she very much highlighted this uh, theory to impose the cultural hegemony. The post-colonial literature is aimed to revisit the history, reveal economic, political, and cultural impact of colonialism. Mm. Analysis of mode of colonialism and decolonization, multiple identities of gender, ethnicity, class, and race. The post-colonial literature tries to analyze in what way, in what mode, the colonialism is established in the colonial country, how the decolonization has taken place, how during this colonial period, how multiple identities have created, how the ethnicity, class and race have brought, have undergone such changes. So Gauri Vishwanathan's The Beginning of English Literary Studies in British India, it brings out this theory. Minakshi Mukherjee's Interrogating Post-Colonialism are the books that are worth to read. Then we have existentialism is another term that you must have studied about human existence, nature of human existence. Existentialism stands for existence. It's about human existence. It's a kind of a investigation and value of the existence, meaning of being. What does it mean to be living being? How to cope with the nature? How to cope with the existence of a human being? Existentialism highlights that the people are entirely free, therefore responsible for what make of themselves. How the people are behaving? how they make of themselves for every human activity in this, in this vast nature. The people are responsible, entirely responsible for their own existence. So this psycho natural, psycho uh, sexual analysis of individual existence is unfathomable. There are individual choices, freedom. At the same time, the human being can use his own uh, rational decisions to cope with the nature, to cope with the human existence. Existentialism highlights that there is nothing, any kind of a transcendence, uh, power of God. The man is realizing the human existence. There is no linkage. He has nothing to support. He's, he's forlorn. No one can help him but himself. So he's not going to help to buy the God or the superpower. And the only way is to embrace his own existence. So it brings out the absurdity of human being of humanity. It needs to accept suffering and death. Suffering at death is inevitable. 
Why the dust of us came? Jean Paul Sartre, Knights, were the very well known uh, existentialist writers. Coming on to the unit number second, where uh, George Orwell's very good novel, 1984, is being prescribed for us. We have another novel that is The Black Prince by Iris Murdoch, but it is um, due to time constraints, so it is difficult to highlight on that both novels. So I'm restricting myself only to discuss on George Orwell's 1984. <clears throat> Totalitarian ideologies. Uh, 1984 novel is uh, politically radical. George Orwell has um, tremendous, uh, say, interest in political happenings. After the World War II, George Orwell has brought the ideologies of Russian Revolution. His novels brings out the self-criticism of the British policies. George Orwell brings out the duplicity of policies of British Empire. The crux of George Orwell's novel is how these empires have risen to the power. What are the efforts that these, uh, these empires are taking to perpetuate their powers? to perpetuate and to bring under control the subjugated countries, to establish the hegemony, how the human values are derided, how human values they are forgotten, how the humanity is forgotten, George Orwell posed these certain questions through his novels like Animal Farm, 1984. How the policies are made to establish the falsity of the government policies. How the common man was duped by the empire by the misrepresentation of facts, how the falsity becomes truth. In 1984, we have seen war is peace. How peace is established? How can peace be? Winston tries to cope with these certain questions. Big Brother is on the side. Big Brother. It's a totalitarian ideology. Who is Big Brother? No one knows. It's a power. It's a government. It's an allegorically the ideologies that brings the superpower. So, 1984 is a political allegory. George Orwell's novels pose these certain questions through the humanitarian perspectives. He has brought the critical uh, self-critical has brought these novels through his work of art. 1984, these are these kinds of concepts. 
James Joyce's now coming on to our third unit, James Joyce's Evelyn. Evelyn's nostalgia. Evelyn, as uh, the story is like this, Evelyn, the daughter of a drunkard father who comes at home, beats her, made her work in her home, but at the same time he cares for her. Evelyn knew that her mother died because of overwork. But at her deathbed, Evelyn has promised to look after the household. She has promised, she has a duty. Uh, the hero of the story is Frank. Frank, who has given Evelyn some beautiful romantic uh, dreams to run away from the home, to live in the foreign land, the land of their dream, the land of their free, her freedom. But Evelyn's promise with her mother, never let her go. She has her duty to perform. She has her commitment to her work. She has promised her mother to look after the father and the household. The commitment made her to stay back. She never goes with Frank. She bids him farewell when the boat was moving out of the shore. She has sacrificed her love for the sake of household things. Although she is suffering, she is embraced. So the story is contrasted with the poverty-stricken Ireland against rich and uh, dreamt happiness abroad. James Jersey is critical about the Irish writers who were forsaking, uh, who were forsaking Ireland for the rich and oh, same beautiful land like England. They are leaving their homes. So Evelyn stands for this. In unit third, we have the northern of uh, story that is for our dolls, lamb to the slaughter. As the story as we know, it's a story of uh, Patrick Maloney and Mary Maloney. Patrick Maloney was returning home. Mary Maloney was mm, doing her work on the table. She was waiting. She is pregnant. But when Patrick Maloney returns at home as a masculine. He announces his decision to, to give up his marital relation with Mary. Mary was shocked. She was, she has waited. She is waiting for Patrick to return out of love and not to listen to Patrick Maloney's divorce. Patrick Maloney has brought a surprise and shock. Patrick Maloney represents the masculinity and power as he tells this is to, to give up 
their relations, their commitment, his commitment towards Mary and towards his unborn child. And he just thinking, women as child bearers, domestic servants, the husband in the form of Patrick Malloy reinforces his patriarchal power by giving Mary orders, refusing to acknowledge her efforts as his emotional caregiver. See, uh, he promises everything will be taken care of. Mary will be taken care of. Is going to pay the alimony. Is going to pay for their unborn child for entire his education. Mary's focus is entirely on him, as it has been for the entire marriage. She has never thought of any, anyone else. She was shocked and surprised. Mary returns to the fridge. Her eyes get the sight of the lamb, leg of the lamb, and she brings heavily at the back of his head. Lambs, as we know, have been used for thousands of years as a symbol of innocence and meekness and purity. Lamb, the leg of a lamb is a frozen heart. And she has brought heavily on the back of its head killed him instantly. Without wasting any more time, Mary goes to the oven, put the lamb leg in the oven and then crushes hurriedly to the shopkeeper. Where well, to get few things? When she comes back, she has expressed her deeper emotion, her love, surprise, just as his, her husband has been killed. Mary cries. Then she goes to the telephone to call his office and the cops. As we discuss the cops, after a thorough investigation, cannot find the weapon they are looking for. The After thorough investigation, and again investigation, Jack, one of the acquaintance of Patrick Malloy, suspected as no one has entered, no weapon is to be located. Mary has served these cops as an acquaintance with her husband, the leg lamb, leg of lamb, in the waiting. The proof, the evidence of the, the murder, the proof of the murder, the evidence of the murder has been eaten away. And Mary was laughing loudly in the kitchen. Then Jack came to know that the leg of lamb is being used to slaughter. The lamb of, the lamb to slaughter is the innocence of the male to slaughter by the act of violence. She was forced to 
react violently it's a violence of a love violence of a devotion and fragility of the identity another story that goes invisible japanese gentleman the story that every student might have known it's a invisible japanese gentleman the story brings out the sense of empowerment after the marriage the the girl feels that the restaurant may be short lived graham green is exploring the theme of independence an element of innocence frigal dream depend on high regards of writing talent dwight the publisher has promised her book her book is promised fragal dream depend on high regards of writing talent the girl can see no negatives about her book which is something unusual to the writer she accepted that her book will be famous as the publisher has told her she is jumping to the conclusion that she will be earning enough to support their marital life graham greene in the form of a narrator has put the observation is an important aspect for the writer he himself is a writer and what fragal dream the girl is assuming and rest her marital life when she leaves the restaurant she misses the very good observation of a japanese gentleman yet she is not observant to see the group of japanese gentlemen so the story brings us certain issues to our mind then another story that run is angela carter's the courtship of mr lime beauty and thus we are forced to see the diametrical opposed forces beauty is feminine beautiful innocent and gentle while the beast is masculine ugly experienced and wild beauty is characterized beautiful she is beautiful she is innocent she is just a tender she is just in a tender age of her flowering youth while the beast is hairy masculine sturdy well built experienced and wild looking carter is very famous for her writing she brings out the man's conflict with the nature the elements of nature carter uses the city and the country as symbols to strengthen this contention that the person needs to be both masculine and feminine to have an authentic and fulfilled existence carter brings forth the the need of the nature and the need of the human world to cope with each other the human being needs to understand what are the requirements of the nature what the nature wants from the humanity from the human world if they are against each other there will be the clashes there will be the tragedy 
like duty, the best does not conform to his side of a irreconcilable banner of beauty or best. Best is best. He brings through the beauty, the love that inspired the beast. The binary, the reconcilable binary is consult, reconciled. But is still a beautiful woman. She has almost forgotten the promise she made for made to the beast that she will come, she will return back. But she never returned. She was enjoying the beautiful life, the rich life, enjoying the parties. After her father won the case that was pending in the court of law. See, it's a mixture of both beauty and the best. <clears throat> beauty, who returns to the beast when the dog who rushes all through the way to bring the beauty at the end, fag end of his life. He shared and it's a wonderful act, it's a wonderful story that we see in the form of Angela Carter's Beast and Beauty. So hope so these somewhat some uh, revision, some points would help you better. These points, what I discussed, what I just uh, brought forth to you, and just a revisionary one. I hope that it would be useful to recast your uh, understanding and strengthen your understanding. With these words, I end here. Thank you.